Okay, so thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Ian Holmes. Uh, I'm a supporter with Guy McGarver. He'll be answering the questions if you type any in. And today we're going to look at using CAD um, with Digimap data. So after this webinar, you'll receive an email uh, tomorrow lunchtime, uh, which will have a recording of this webinar. We're recording this and we'll put it on our YouTube channel. There'll also be a link to download the slides that we'll go through today, a transcript of all the questions and answers that are asked. And uh, following on from this webinar, actually, there will be a feedback form will pop up straight after you've, you leave the webinar. It'd be really helpful if you could complete it just for a bit more information. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for future webinar topics, for example, that's a really good place to add them. So we're going to look at three things today uh, to do with CAD and Digimap. The first one is what data sets are available in CAD formats, so in, in native CAD formats. <clears throat> we'll also look at how you access that data, the best way to download it. And the third part is we're going to look at how we use that data in AutoCAD. So we're going to look at the AutoCAD products today. Before we do that, I'm just going to re really quick poll just so we've got an idea of who we've got attending today. So uh, if I just launch this, so you'll see we've got quite a lot of undergraduates on, postgraduates, uh, some support staff and academic staff as well. Okay, that's great. Thanks for doing that, everybody. It just gives us an idea of who we've got today. Okay, so the first part today then is what data is available in native CAD formats. So we're going to look at vector data, uh, terrain and height data, and raster data. So this table here lists all the vector data sets that we provide uh, through the Digimap service in native CAD format. So the right hand side there, that column lists the uh, the CAD format that we provide the data in. There is a link on this page to one of our help pages, if I just click on this. We maintain this table all the time and it lists all the data sets that are available in Digimap for download and all the different formats that each one's available in. You'll see it's quite a big list. Uh, not everything's available in CAD format, but hopefully the key data sets that, uh, that you would use in CAD are available. I'll talk a little bit more about these different ones in a minute. So the first one is the OS master map topography layer. This is the most detailed mapping available for Great Britain, and it's provided by Ordnance Survey. It's a fully polygonized data set, so um, it basically covers the whole of Britain in a, in a series of adjacent and, uh, and touching polygons, so the whole surface is covered. Um, Ordnance Survey are concerned with what features are on the ground, so they're not they're not so concerned with what they're used for. So, for example, buildings, they're interested if it's a building, they're not actually interested if it's a residential building or an industrial building or a commercial building. They don't store that information, they just store the fact that it is a building. Um, we actually make the um, master map data available in two versions. One of them is a full color version, so that's what you see on the screen there. And the second one is, is a plan style, uh, which basically just concentrates on the line work. So we've got the buildings as lines rather than polygons. We'll have a quick look at these two in, in a minute. The next data set, which is probably of, of use to CAD um, users, is the building height attribute data set. So this gives us um, a heighted buildings data set for Great Britain. This... Um, matches up with the master map topography layer. So basically Ordnance Survey took out all the building features from the master map topography layer, which are the most detailed building outlines that they have, and they assign various heights to those features. Um, so you can use this to create 3D models. It's currently, uh, the, currently the version in Digimap is an alpha version that was last updated in December 2014. Um, they recently have released a new version, which is now a beta version, so it's still not guaranteed to be entirely error free um, but the new version is not available in Digimap just yet but we will look to add it as soon as we are supplied it from Ordnance Survey. We haven't actually received that data just yet. Um, the, the coverage is pretty good. Uh, in the new version that they've just released, if we click on this link here, Ordnance Survey maintain a page. Um, it's got a sample on there. It's also got a coverage map. If we flip to the coverage map, just zoom out a little bit. The coverage now, so all these, this is the south east of, of uh, England, here's East Anglia, London's down here. You see the vast majority of the area is now covered. Uh, if we scroll up to Scotland, you'll see it's not so good coverage up in Scotland, but uh, in terms of England and Wales, the coverage is really good now. So we, um, we make this data available in DWG format, but because it's 
provided with some various height attributes, um, you need to apply it to a surface as well. So otherwise you will have buildings floating in midair. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute with a real uh, data set taken from Digimap. So these are the height attributes that Ordnance Survey provide. There's two absolute heights. So these are relative to sea level. So absolute height minimum and maximum. And then they've got a, sorry, there's a third one as well, which is the height of the eaves here. And then from that, they've derived two relative heights. So the maximum relative height and the sort of eave minimum height. With the models that we've done, we've tended to use this relative height to value here. So building our buildings that tall as it gives a more accurate representation of what you see on the ground. Vector map local is another product that we make available in CAD format. This is less detailed than master map, but it's good for smaller scale projects. So things like at the sort of town level. Um, the nice thing about Vector Map Local is it's got contour data and spot heights as well. You can see those on the screen grab there. You can see the orange contour lines going through the woodland area here. This is obviously flatter. Okay, so that's all the vector data. We've also got a number of terrain or height data sets that are available in CAD formats. Um, the two main products are the ones called Ordnance Survey Terrain 5 and Ordnance Survey Terrain 50. The de difference between them is that the Terrain 5 data is far more detailed um, the two products at the end there, uh, Landform Profile and Landform Panorama, they, they're actually old products that have been withdrawn by on the survey, but they're still available through Digimap, uh, and they are available in those native CAD formats. So in a little bit more detail, DTMs, they're digital terrain models, so that is a raster data set that provides a surface of heights. Contours are vector data sets of heighted contours, so you get line work of different heights. So like I said before, the main difference between Terrain 5 and Terrain 50 is the level of detail. So in Terrain 5, the contours have a 5 meter vertical interval, and the digital terrain model version has a 5 meter cell size, so it's a square grid of 5 meter cells. Terrain 50 has contours at 50 meter interval, and the DTM has a 50 meter cell size, so it's a much more coarse data set. So if your study area is really small, you're looking at a very small area of a town centre or a particular building, and you want to take the most detailed data available. That's usually the Terrain 5 data. Okay, so moving on to the backdrop mapping data. There's a whole bunch of different backdrop mapping data sets available. They're all provided in sort of image formats, usually TIFFs, um, but the aerial imagery through Aerial Digimap is also available. Sorry, it's actually available in a JPEG format. Um, so there are 10 different raster backdrop mapping products available, and they're all suitable for use as backdrop mapping. For large scale projects that focus on small areas, then the raster versions of OS Master Map is a really good data set to use. Um, for less detailed, uh, the, the less detail you need, then obviously you can go down, you can look at um, right down to mini scale at one to one million scale. So that's for really large study areas. But there's a whole range of different products in between. The, the screen grab on the screen there is the 1 to 25,000 color raster, which anybody that does outdoor activities will be familiar. That's the, um, the Explorer series of maps that Ordnance Survey produced in hard copy. Another really good data set for modeling, 3D modeling, is the new aerial imagery data, which can be downloaded from the, the aerial Digimap collection, which we launched last year. This is 25 centimeter resolution aerial imagery. It's come from a company called Get Mapping. It's the largest and most detailed aerial imagery available for the whole of Great Britain. Like I said before, it's provided in JPEG format, but most CAD applications can use that these days, and you can drape those over terrain surfaces to create realistic 3D models. The data at the moment is the most up-to-date that Get Mapping produce. There's a large chunk of data that we're waiting for them for last year's flying, but the most recent at the moment is from 2015, and that covers around 30, 35% of the country. So it is kept up to date, and we will update it as soon as we receive more, more data from Get Mapping. Okay, so that's a, a range, uh, an overview of all the data sets that are available um, for use in CAD. We do maintain an update page on our help system where we show that when the data was last updated and when it was produced by the data supplier. We always update that, so when we add new data to the system or update existing data sets, we will always update that page. So if you want to know how up-to-date something is, you can quickly refer to that page, and there's a link on the slides just there. 
So the next part is actually getting hold of the data. Um, rather than show you slides, what we'll do is we'll just jump into the data download application. Oops, it. So to get hold of the data, you go to the Ordnance Survey collection on the homepage and you go to data download. I've already logged in, so we're going straight in. It's just like every other download, it's a three-step process. You choose your area using one of the tools in here. You choose your data sets using the, the available options in here, and then you add it to your basket and do the order. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in to Edinburgh and order a little bit of data for here. Let's go right into the castle, which is here. Here's Edinburgh Castle. So the easy way to order your data is to draw a rectangle. So I'm just going to highlight this area on screen. But if you know the coordinates for your study area, or you know the Ordnance Survey tile names for that particular area, you can use those instead. The next step is to choose the data that you want. So topography here under the master map heading is the most detailed data available. So this is OS master map topography layer. This is the one that I showed you at the very start. We can also take some building heights. There's nothing to stop you ordering multiple data sets in a single order. So you can take all the data sets that you require. If you want some backdrop mapping as well, you can order that from the backdrop mapping section. And also take some uh, terrain surfaces and contours. So you can add all these options to your basket and you'll get all the data that overlaps that area. The next step is to click Add to Basket. This will pop up our, our basket. There is no charge, I should add, at this point. All the data is free at the point of use. It's all covered by your institutional subscription. Now you've got a few options in here. You'll see some of these things are drop down. Some of them don't have options. Um, the first one is the version column here. We have multiple versions of a lot of these data sets. So Ordnance Survey Master Map Topography Layer has been around since um, January 2007. And we have all the previous versions of that data available. So if you're looking for data for a particular point in time, the first thing to do is check the version column for that data set. By default, you'll always be provided with the most recent data that we have in the system. Um, so different data sets have got different availability. If we look at this one, uh, the Terrain 5 Contours only goes back to October 2014. So it depends when the products were produced by Ordnance Survey and how long they've been around. The second column is the format column. This one's really important. Hopefully, if you're using CAD, then you will have an option in here. You'll recognize a file format option that is appropriate for use in CAD. So a lot of the data sets that we provide are in DWG format. So that's an AutoCAD drawing format that most CAD applications can, um, can use. In terms of DTMs, ASCII and XYZ, they're both CAD compatible. So you will see for different products, you get different formats available. Um, but you do need to choose one that's going to work in the software that you intend to use this data in. So for topography, I can choose the DWG format. And you'll see now that this theme option has become uh, available as well. This goes back to what I said at the very start, that we produce OS Master Map Topography Layer in two versions, one being the fully polygonized full color version, and the second one being the outline or plan style, which is just a, a line work version of that with simple colors uh, for the lines. And finally, having chosen a theme now, you'll see that layers has become active. Within some of the data sets, we actually allow you to do a sub-selection when you place your order. So if you're actually only interested in the building footprints, you don't have to order the whole data set. You can actually just choose just the buildings. Similarly, if your project is an infrastructure project, you might be interested in roads uh, and rail as well, things like that. So you can just take some of the, some of the data set that you need especially good um, if that's a large area you're looking at because obviously if you cut down the number of features in your order then the the size of the order is much smaller and the size of the data set is much smaller so it's a lot easier to handle on a local desktop computer okay so having chosen the options i've only done it for this topography layer here uh, you can then choose uh, you can actually place your order using the request download button here uh, if you haven't chosen all the options when you press this button it will remind you that you need to choose formats for some of these data sets but if I chosen all those, you could then place the order. Uh, when you place the order, you will get an email acknowledging receipt of your order, and then you will get a second email when that data is available for download. All data will be provided within 48 hours, but generally it's available a lot quicker. So it depends how busy our system is and how many people are ordering data at the time, um, and obviously the size of the areas that people are ordering as well. Okay. 
So that's how you get hold of the data. At this point, it'd be really useful, actually, if we could just run another poll just to find out what uh, software everybody uses. So if I launch a second poll, if you just share the results. So that's really interesting to see. 75% of people are using AutoCAD, 50% use ArcGIS, uh, a few others, a few other bits there as well. That's really good. Thanks for taking the time to, to share that with us. Uh, we can have a look at those results and see if we need to provide any more help or other documentation. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is actually look at viewing the data. Um, we're going to view a couple of the different data sets uh, and then talk about some of uh, some of the things that we've done to the, to the data to make it easier to, to view and to use in the system. So I'm actually going to flip over to AutoCAD now and just go straight into a data set that we've taken from Digimap. This isn't the one I just downloaded because obviously that'll still be chugging away behind scenes but this is the full color version of OS master map topography layer this is Edinburgh Castle here if I just scroll zoom in a little bit you can see so this is the most detailed data available from Ordnance Survey so you can see around the War Memorial here it's really detailed it's captured that really nicely um, it is full color so if you print this uh, you will get it appearing as it is on the screen we've used standard Ordnance Survey colors when we set this up so it does look like the Ordnance Survey versions if you see those on their website we have got all the attribute data stored behind this. So all of these features has got a number of attributes with them, but it's stored as X data. So if we just list X data for this war memorial. Okay, so uh, I think I clicked on a bit of text there, but you'll see it's in the theme of buildings. It's got um, various bits of information, if it's man-made, what the text says in that case. Um, as all the attributes are stored on these features, but it can be quite hard to interrogate them, um, but just be aware that that's where they are. The second version of master map that we created was the one that we call our plan style. So again, this is the same area, and if I zoom in again, slightly different area, you see we've still got all the detailed building outlines, um, but it's a much simpler representation. So we've used white for the majority of the line work, apart from buildings, which we used a red color for. And again, we've got the attributes stored as X data. If I choose one of the lines. So you'll see it's got the same sort of information. It's a building, it's an obstructing feature. It's in the building's theme. It's got dates attached to it. And it's got a toid, which is a unique identifier in terms of Ordnance Survey language. So that's a nice cleaner representation that we, we did that for CAD users um, to hopefully make it easier for you guys when you're working with, uh, with the data in your CAD applications. So the next data set I wanted to have a quick look at was the building height data set. So here is a bit of building height data. This is actually for the most northern part of Edinburgh uh, and this is the port of Leith around here. Now you can see this is much simpler. There are only building features in here. Let me just navigate this around. We've just got the buildings outlines, building outlines, and they're shown as a solid orange color. If I flip this into a 3D view, you can see these features are actually sort of floating on a surface. Um, so they're not all on a flat plane. They're actually floating on a on a particular surface, and the surface is using it's effectively the ordnance survey height values. So what we can do with this we flip over to our insert menu we can actually attach our height data to this so here we've got the terrain 5 contours that are for the same area now because all the data is georeferenced and by that I mean we know where in the world each feature is um, we don't need to click on the map to say where to attach it we can actually use the geographic data that's stored within the file and by doing that we can ensure that the two data sets line up perfectly you'll see when I click the OK button here the contour data set now drops in perfectly underneath all the buildings and if we move it around a little bit we can go up to the coast and you'll see the coastline is drawn in this light blue color here so you'll see it all aligns perfectly and now we've got our buildings on a, on a surface instead of floating in midair so that's our building height data and our contour data in there back to our slides we've done a lot of work recently to ensure that all of our data sets align correctly we previously had uh, issues where some of the data sets didn't align so you could attach the contours and they would be in a different place from the buildings that they were meant to relate to but we've done a lot of work to make sure that all our CAD data sets now align perfectly 
So we use British National Grid as the coordinate referencing system for all the data, and we use meters as the unit of measurement. So if you need to convert it, you can convert the units uh, in AutoCAD, um, but uh, the data is supplied using meters, and that's a standard uh, format, effectively, from Ordnance Survey. So we've just gone with their, uh, their standard there. <clears throat> So the master map data that we were looking at in AutoCAD there was the DWG format data. That was downloaded directly from Digimap. Nothing was done to it. I just opened it in AutoCAD. It's got that default representation, be it the full color or the plan outline style, and the attribute data is stored as the extended attribute data. You can actually import OS master map from GML format as well. That doesn't really bring in much by way of representation, but it brings all the line work in. But you get a lot more control then over what you can import and also what attributes you import and you can do a bit more analysis on that. So that might be for some of the advanced users that might be a, a more appropriate way to get the data in. You've got a little bit more control over what you can see and what you can do with that data. So if you wanted to create a 3D model using that building height data then here's some suggested data sets. So take the building height data in DWG format, take a surface, so that's a digital terrain model of the either Terrain 5 or Terrain 50 data. And if you want any other backdrop mapping on there, so for example, the aerial imagery or the master map raster, take those as well. And you can view these. Most CAD applications nowadays will allow you to view 3D models. So AutoCAD Map 3D or InfraWorks are good examples. Here's a screen grab of a model created. Of, um, it's just near Ambleside. Ambleside is the conurbation up here. This is just the buildings draped on top of the 1 to 25,000 color raster, which is draped on top of the Terrain 5 surface. So you get a nice 3D model of the area. We could have used the aerial imagery as a more realistic surface under there. But again, no, no processing was done in InfraWorks about that. We just dragged and dropped the data sets in there, and, uh, and the, the model uh, sets it up for you without any work at all. So just to sort of round up, some of the recent developments that we've done um, I've already mentioned that we've standardized all of our CAD data to use British National Grid and so that they overlay correctly. We also did a bit of work to create the Terrain 5 DTM in an XYZ format, so that's a format that's used in some CAD applications, uh, and that was a response from uh, users that came, a request from users, so we did that for make things a little bit easier. We recently released our aerial Digimap service, which I mentioned uh, at the start when we were talking about different backdrop mapping data sets available. Um, that's been around for about a year now, and we've also provided a LiDAR Digimap collection as well in the last few months, which has got all the LiDAR data available from um, the three different agencies, so for Scotland, Wales, and England, all that data is now available. Uh, it's bundled together with the Aerial Digimap collection. So if your institution subscribes to Aerial Digimap, you will have access to the LiDAR Digimap data as well. Uh, and the good thing about the LiDAR data is it's, it's really high detail. It's got a really good level of detail in there. So you can see trees, you can see cars, boats, things like that from wherever it was uh, flown. If there's anything else you'd like to see added to the service, please get in touch. Um, there's, a, there's a feedback form at the end of this webinar. If you've got any comments, please add them to that, or feel free to, to email them through. And our email address is shown on the screen there. In terms of help resources, we do have a number of um, help pages available for CAD users. The easiest way to get to them is from our resource center. If I just show you where that is. Back on the Digimap homepage, there's a resource link at the very top right-hand side here, resource center. This takes you just to a sort of holding page, a help page, and you'll see down here we've got some information. Under our GIS CAD resources, we've got some help pages around using the data in AutoCAD. Address of that page is shown on screen there. Um, there's a little uh, tree view of the different help pages that are available. Really, that's all I wanted to cover. I'd like to thank everybody for attending. I've seen the little questions things popping up, so hopefully Guy's been managing to respond to all the questions. Uh, but we will stick around for a few minutes and try and answer any more questions, so please do, please do feel free to, to type away. Uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, when you leave the webinar, a little uh, feedback form will pop up. Please be, uh, be very grateful if you could fill that in. Um, if we haven't managed to answer your question during the webinar, we will respond to it afterwards and we will send out a transcript uh, tomorrow with the email with all the other links as well.
So again, thanks very much for attending. I hope that was useful and we will uh, stick around for a few minutes to answer any more questions as they come in. Thank you.